we survived Crit Boat Show 2022. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> it was mad, absolutely mad. And we're so knackered now, aren't we? We are, yeah, we had so much fun. Um, so lovely to see viewers, old faces and old names that we knew, new people put names to faces. Such a lovely time, but we were waxed, weren't we? we so were, tired at yeah, the end of it. It was uh, busy, busy for four days. And to be honest, it was even busier before that, getting the boat fixed up, painted, polished, touched up. And we and, were in the uh, marina for a, nearly a whole nearly week, a week yeah. just with boats out of our side windows. But uh, yeah, we had a lovely time, didn't we? It went really well. And the launch of Coast to Canal with Dee Kafari and... Uh, Haven Knox Johnson Insurance Company went absolutely amazingly well. <laughs> the hall was standing room only yeah. and uh, really enjoyed it. It was fabulous. We were so nervous that there weren't going to be enough people there. We were going around <laughs> for two days before saying, please come, please come. Mm -hmm. Then when we saw the packed hall, we were even more nervous. Yeah, but uh, I think we did okay. Yeah, we did all right. It was good fun, good fun. So we've left Crick Marina. We've headed about five miles up the uh, Leicester line of the Grand Union Canal to Bridge 27, where there's a wonderful little bit of woodland owned by the uh, Woodland Trust that we wanted to have a walk around. You wouldn't even know it was there. As you cruise past, so many boats must go past and, and not visit. And it's tiny, but we're on mooring rings. Um, and just to walk over the bridge, you're just natural, dense woodland. And I thoroughly recommend mooring up there for a day if you get the chance. Yeah, it was wonderful, absolutely beautiful area. So um, we're just going to hang around here for a day or two, enjoy the uh, peace and serenity. It's just like being, I don't know, I feel almost drugged with the, the wildlife again now. We've got um, a water bowl in the, in the reeds opposite, um, surrounded by birdsong again and greenery rather than other boats out the window. And it's back yeah. where we need to be, isn't it? I thought I heard otters squeaking at three o'clock this morning. Oh, yeah? I had a look out the windows, couldn't see anything. No, no. Oh, well, never mind. So we didn't do any filming at Crick because we were just far too busy. Yeah. Um, and we were just busy talking to people as well. And we didn't want to walk around with the camera, so we didn't film anything, did we? No, I guess if you want to see some footage of Crick Boat Show 2022, just search. Crick Boat Show 2022 in YouTube and there'll be plenty. There's plenty loads there. out there, yeah, yeah. loads. So we're going to show a little few bits of the seminar itself. Nothing arduous or boring for you to watch, <laughs> just a, a minute or two. And then we're going to play the first episode of Coast to Canal with Dee. Yeah, and the second episode is going to be in about two weeks' time, I think, well, isn't it? Probably less than that, now, just 10 we'll, days or something like that, yeah. We'll let you know when it's going to be. Okay, we'll see you on the other side. Johnston, thank you all for being here for the launch of the video Coast to Canal Project with Brown and Rich from Floating Our Boats YouTube channel and Deep Safari. Yeah. Shortly, <laughs> Shortly after we left your boat last night, what was that big splash? <laughs> oh yeah. You okay. <laughs> I uh, took um, Jill home from Narrowboat Desiderata, best in show. And uh, I came back to the boat, a uh, few glasses of wine, words, stepped on, but didn't step on, and just went straight down. <laughs> like this. It's the first time I've ever fallen in. We've been sharing fun today, it's the old shoes are drying out, and uh, yeah. Poor old Fran, you were, you were just distraught earlier. Really. So, uh, I just stick. <laughs> the funny thing is, I said to Fran earlier in the day, I wonder how deep it is. <laughs> it's that deep. One well, of the few times you don't have your cameras rolling. Oh, I'm never drinking again. <laughs> but I had not only Rich and Fran looking after me, but also the two dogs, Archie and Jess. And I just want to check how they are, my little pals. Make sure they haven't fallen in too often and they're still having the best life ever. They're doing really well. Uh, Jess is slowing down a little bit now. She's getting a bit older, but uh, they're fed up for this weekend, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> they just want to get back on the boat yeah. in the countryside yeah. somewhere. Yeah. It's, it's a great life for dogs. The canal, canal life, to me, is the best life for dogs. They've always got somewhere different to run. Um, yeah, they get a bit wet sometimes, but uh, yeah, they're both doing well. 
the, the whole experience was fab. We had about 11 guys with film crew, sound engineers, everything all bombing around us. We were going through Foxton Locks. We thought we were Robbie Cummings at one point, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> the BBC crew around us. Yeah. I think she was very worried about that was your thing as well, wasn't she? She was worried about it, but it was, it was she's in control of our home, you know, it's the only place we live. And um, but after about five or ten minutes she was fine, wasn't she? Yeah, it was when we when we told her that if you're in a lock and you miss the seal or you'll get above the seal that you could actually sink our home in five minutes. I think her, her eyes rolled a little bit, but um, it was fun, wasn't it? The memories are really strong from the two days we all spent together. And what really stands out for me is the community, the interaction, the support, and the network that you have on the waterways. And I want to ask Rich and Fran, who have travelled extensively now on our waterways and canal network, where's their favourite place? Oh, wow. Uh, favourite place is on the boat, actually, wherever we are. <laughs> um, Peak Forest Canal, I think, don't you? I think the Peak Forest is a favourite spot. Colin and Sean will uh, verify it, and it's absolutely beautiful. I've done a lot of number of bridges after, it's not far after Marble, and you can moor there, and the view is just stunning. So uh, we're heading up north again soon, aren't we? We are. It, it's funny though, because the Peak Forest is, I think we would say that is our favourite spot, but we already want to go back down on the Thames to that play, and Avon. And sometimes when you've been on, on quiet stretches for a while, you long to be back in the city for a few days, don't you? Not for long. Not for long. <laughs> it's my absolute pleasure that I have the privilege to introduce to you episode one of the series we made of my experience narrating, and I hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. I'm Dee Kafari. In 2006, I became the first woman to sail single-handedly, non-stop around the world, against the winds and currents. Since then, I've won a host of yachting silverware, skippered some incredible teams and boats, been awarded an MBE, and even set a few world records. But now I'm setting myself a whole new challenge. I'm swapping the vast open ocean for the beautifully scenic waterways of England's canal network as I try narrow boating for the very first time. Okay, now we're full of the action. I'm all over this now. I'm teaming up with canal boaters Fran and Rich from YouTube channel Floating Our Boat. They will be my instructors and guides as I pilot their wonderful home through the narrow canals, huge locks, swing bridges, and tunnels, sampling all that there is to enjoy on the inland waterways. Cheers. Cheers. Thank well you done. for a wonderful day. I'm Having experienced just about every type of boating on open water, I'm up for a new challenge and ready to give it my best shot. So today I'm a little bit excited and a little bit nervous. I'm going narrow boat sailing, boating, I don't know what you call it. I'm going on a narrow boat. It's owned by Rich and Fran and they're going to show me the ropes because I literally have no idea what it's all about. This is a real first for me, completely out of my comfort zone. I didn't even know what to wear. Good morning to you. Oh, morning, Dee. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. Good morning. It's good to see you. Hi, Rich. At last. Yes. <laughs> Hey you. Good morning, lovely Hi, to see Fran. you. Hi lovely you to okay? see you. You okay? You ready good for this? Trip. I am, yeah, good trip so far. Now I'm a bit nervous, out of my comfort zone. I literally have not done this at all before. It's a You'll breeze, be fine. it's You'll a be breeze. Fine. I've got clothes for all occasions, all weathers, because I have no idea what to expect. No, that's all right. It could be all weathers, you don't know, do you? So, <laughs> so far, so good. Come on board. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow, home away from home. Yeah, so this is our little place, as you can see, galley with everything we need in it. Um, the heart of the home is the uh, dinette area where everything happens now. This is going to be your bed for this evening. Yeah, this oh, will okay, collapse well. down. Okay, this looks quite good size. And there's one question I have. Do you have a toilet on the boat? Uh, yes, oh. if we take you through this way. 
This is all mod cons. I'm not sleeping with the dogs then. Well, they're in the same room with you and they oh, do right. they do snore. <laughs> so yeah, we have a full full size shower and um I get them my shower at home. Toilet. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So there's nothing basic about it really, it's okay. And we've got a bedroom next door, so we'll be cozy for the night, I think. So that's all good. What do we do to get going? Well, just gotta start the engine, untie, lift up the fenders and we're off. So we Two minutes. Have, we don't have to like rig the boat. There's no, the garden there's away. no rigging, there's no sails. No. It's all easy peasy. Come on, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Reach and Fran's boat is delightful, with many more mod cons than I'm used to having on the yachts that I've raced. Getting underway is a breeze, but it's not long before Rich is keen to test my driving skills. Right, Dee, I think it's your turn to uh, take over. Oh, God. Archie. Just remember, nothing can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're used to a tiller anyway, aren't you? I am, so, but yeah. it's like really narrow. As in, not the boat, the waterway we're on. Like I've got a magnet. So to you this need side. to start turning now because it's not yeah, gonna it go very react quickly. Right over. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna end up in the trees, I see what you mean. You've got to you've got Oh to no turn. there's a bridge coming, I can't You'll go. Be fine. <laughs> it's not relaxing. <laughs> Bit of zigzagging going on. <laughs> I take the Mickey out of people that drive boats zigzagging around the place and here I am on a boat doing exactly that. What could possibly go wrong? I feel like I'm going really fast now. You're on tick over, that's all. It's the slowest this boat goes. This is the slowest we go. The pressure is unbelievable. Okay, I feel like I'm going in a straight line a bit better now. This is quite stressful right now. We're coming up to a bridge, it's really narrow. And he said, get close to the towpath on this side, but that's solid. Perfect. Amazing. For the first bridge, that's pretty good, huh? Well done. No, don't close your eyes. <laughs> don't close your eyes. <laughs> The odd zigzag aside, it's so far so good, and I definitely feel more confident. But a big challenge is waiting for me a little further up the canal in the shape of Foxton Locks. These locks are the longest and the steepest staircase locks in the UK. And with 4,000 boats passing through each year, it's also one of the busiest spots on the Grand Union Canal. So Dee, what we've got here is probably one of the most iconic places on the inland waterway system. This is Foxton Locks. We've got 10 staircase locks to get ten. through, 10 staircase locks. You go in from to one lock, down, straight into the next one and down. And I can do the windy bits are? You can do the opening of the locks, opening the gates, letting Fran take the boat through. But halfway down, you're going to be on the back of the boat, taking the boat through the locks. Fran will be with you, so you'll be all okay, no problems. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the lock bit because that's really practical. <laughs> the, I mean, it's just so narrow and controlling the boat. I'm whew, quite stressed about that. It's fine. It's just slowly, slowly. That's the way to do it. Happy boss. Well, here goes nothing. Worst case scenario, I could sink Fran and Rich's house. So no pressure at all then. Is this bit that you're worried about? Yeah, it's like, because I'm so zigzaggy when I drive from my experience this morning. Oh, made to measure, Rich. <laughs> right, so we could close the gate now. Oh, that was a bit tougher than I thought. Wonderful. We're going across. On here. It's the most dangerous bit, isn't it? <laughs> well, so far, so good. My next important job is filling and emptying the locks once Rich has manoeuvred into them. This is done with a series of red and white paddles. Red paddles fill the locks and white paddles empty them. A simple rhyme coined by a wise lock keeper helps you remember what order you have to wind them in. Red before white all the way down the flight. I feel a bit more at home now. I feel like I'm grinding, which is what I'm used to. A bit of a different angle. I've got, I've got to get busy because the boat's going without me. <laughs> Come oh on, God, Dee. I've got to do loads. Chop, chop. Go, wait for me. She's doing amazingly. She's like so fast, so speedy. I couldn't keep up with her at the moment. Oh, I'm getting quick now. With each lock I open, I'm finding it easier and falling into a bit of a rhythm. But just as I'm finding my comfort zone, it's my turn to pilot the boat through the remaining locks. 
kind of nervous, so I don't really know what to expect because you can't see anything. I feel very contained, but I'm not very good at going in a straight line, so that's why I'm quite nervous. <laughs> going into the unknown. I feel like I'm going really fast already, but without speed, you don't get any steerage, do you? It's true, yeah. So just watch your side of the lock and just get as close as you can to it, and you're doing fine. Just He's keep going me... straight. Oh, I bumped. Right, come to me a little bit. That's it. And then and straighten it up again. Oh, <laughs> no, I bumped. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. We've got tins of paint here, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> Back into neutral. Okay, well. I bumped your boat. <laughs> bumped your boat. I bumped your boat. I feel like I've just bumped Dad's car. It's a huge relief to get the boat through my first lock unscathed. Well, maybe with the odd bump. But with Fran and Rich's help and instruction, the next four locks are a breeze. My next major challenge is steering the boat out of the final lock into more open water. Okay, so go out really slowly and just go straight until we see where we're going. I've got no idea, there could be boats moored to your left, I don't know, but just ignore them and we're gonna have to turn right at some point. And you can't really steer until the back of the boat because they steer from the back. You can't do anything until the boat is out of the lock. That's it, you can start steering now. It's got a quiet turn though, so. Not a lot's happening. Right, give it a little bit of power then. Oh, Fran, this right. isn't good. No, you're right, because you might have to reverse it for a bit. Just give it a little bit of power. You're right over, aren't you? Give it a little bit of a blast. And then go into reverse. I feel like I'm not doing a very good job. <laughs> Try pumping it, bring it towards me and then pull it back really quickly, a few times, and give it some blast on the... Forwards or back? Yeah, forwards. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. She went completely wrong coming out of there, too fast probably, but uh, there's not much room to manoeuvre in there, but she went straight into the bank. <laughs> right, forwards and that way. Just keep it going round now. Just keep going forward, keep it, that's it, there, forwards. While the front is touching there, oh, or just like bring a it. Yeah, now you've hit the front. You might as well stay there. <laughs> I might as well stay there. No, I really hit the front. Well, this isn't very easy, is it? I'm here, don't worry. <laughs> save me, Rich, save me. Fran's given up hope. Oh, I've got a human bow thruster, that's what we like. And a bit more power, I'll give it a blast. I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit. Oh no, we're good. Yeah, oh my God, we're good. Oh, made to measure. Yeah, baby. All right. <laughs> well done. I am relieved, but I uh, didn't have to be worried at all. She's, uh, she's done absolutely marvellous. Really, really well done. And coming out of there and bumping into the bank, anybody does that, everybody does that. And she's had no wind to contend with as well, so that's uh, a bonus. I bumped the boat. <laughs> I was traumatised. She did bump the boat. I bumped the boat. And <laughs> actually, and there's nowhere to go because the, uh, the walls are right there and I still was super stressed. And then I got wedged with an audience and that was quite embarrassing, really. But a really nice lady said I was doing a great job. <laughs> but Fran deserves 10 out of 10 for patience and confidence. You didn't take over at all. You were very confident in my ability. No, More confident than I was. I wasn't going to take over. <laughs> <laughs> As we head further up the canal, we reach my next major challenge in the shape of a swing bridge. Earlier in the day, I tackled a much simpler version, but this one looks quite a bit more challenging. So this bridge is significantly different to the other one. And it's got a road involved, so I got the policewoman in me to stop the traffic. I'm trying to find some instructions. Ah, oh, instructions. <laughs> Ensure the claw is completely in place to open or lock the barrier gates. When all barriers back in place, wait for safe before you remove the key. Okay, try again. Insert. <laughs> Am I missing something? Typical. It was never going to be that easy, was it? But I'm reassured it's nothing I've done no, wrong no, when I another boater help. appears and tells me there's no power running to the barrier control, and so I'll have to close them manually. This gentleman is running a training 
a training session on a narrowboat and he's also training me, little does he know. Sorry, just swing that through. Yeah, are you coming yeah. um, through? I can just tuck under. Okay. Yeah. And then we go this side and I pull my red handle, I saw this bit. Yeah. To open the bridge, pull the red handle and push the bridge. Yeah. Pull, so, pull and push. And I can say this is a significantly heavier bridge than the last one. Um, with a bit of guidance it was easy, but I would have struggled because I was trying to follow the instructions and the key wasn't making my barriers shut. But I'm sure I would have worked it out in the end, just physically stop it all. That's cheating. <laughs> you said how sociable this narrow boating was. <laughs> We made it and I had a little help. What was that all about? He was a very friendly man that wanted to help. <laughs> I turned the key and it didn't like... happen automatically. So you had to manually do it and I didn't know that. So he did help and then he continued to help. Unfortunately for you, Dee, we're going back that way. So you can do it all on your own. <laughs> oh, I'm practiced now, I'm practiced. <laughs> Well, we're back underway again and heading onwards to my next challenge, which is to turn this boat around. Easier said than done. There are only certain areas of the canal wide enough to do this, and it's basically a three-point turn, but in a 50-foot, 14-tonne boat with very limited manoeuvrability. Even with my boating experience, this is definitely going to be a challenge. Right now, swing it swing hard it right in. Over. Go now? Yeah. yeah. Take it right in. Oh, my bottom's in the reeds. Literally, my bottom's in the reeds. Is this okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep it there, hold it there. I'm going through the undergrowth. I feel like David Attenborough. Just nudge, nudge the bow in and bring, that's it. Now, a bit forward. Again? Yeah, just swing the back around while the bow's at the front. There we go, see? Oh, yeah. A bit more, my men, a bit more revs. There she goes. Now just reverse, slowly, that's it. Let the momentum just keep going. Essentially, just keep doing that until we're pointing that way. Unfortunately, this boat decides to turn when it's going reverse, so you need to keep turning it around the right way. I've learned patience is the key here, and she does go, it's just, you've got to not kill your momentum, and slowly but surely, I feel quite proud of myself that I haven't used a bow thruster. This one will do you, I think. Go back <laughs> for, further than you have before. A bit more revs. Well, <laughs> I'm going into the undergrowth. The front of the boat looks sweet as. My bottom doesn't look too sweet. <sighs> well done. Not bad, eh? Ooh, and we were purists. No bow thrusters. No, no bow, bow thrusters. thrusters. Well no. done. Ooh, I think I need a cup of tea after that. Not a bad job at all, even if I do say so myself. What an amazing day it's been. I have definitely been well and truly tested in more ways than I expected, but I've loved every minute of it. I'm actually <laughs> amazed I turned the boat in that. That is actually a small space, yeah. As we moor up for the evening, it's time to enjoy a well-earned glass of wine after an epic day. Cheers. Cheers. Well Thank done. you for a wonderful day. I was a bit nervous this morning. I didn't really know what to expect, but actually I've had a really lovely day. I mean, the weather's obviously helped, but actually it's really peaceful. The people are really friendly. It's quite a community it's environment. It's a great community on the canal system. Yeah. And you're right. I went from a white knuckle ride for the first hour, zigzagging everywhere to actually relaxing and starting to be able to look around as well as where I was going. Yeah. I didn't think that was going to happen. Yeah. So. Yeah, you did. You could see that you looked, your face looked relaxed at the end of the day. And, yeah, uh... whereas this morning it was like concentration. I was exhausted. I think I'm exhausted from all the concentration, <laughs> for sure. So this is going to go down well. Here's to tomorrow. Cheers. Another day, <laughs> another day in paradise. Another day, another tunnel. <laughs> oh. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you.
But well, we hope you enjoyed that. It really was as much fun as I hope it looked um, to make it. Um, we're just hoping if they're going to take us sailing. That, well, Rich is hoping to go sailing. Yeah, to I'm not that. so sure, but we'll see what happens. A rematch. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. So that's it for us this week. Um, we're not going to be doing much filming now until we get up to the River Trent, way past Leicester. So uh, we'll show you the next episode of this coming up in a 10 days time or something and then we'll start vlogging. Once we're on new ground, on new ground. and um, new adventures and new exciting stuff to show you. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for watching and Thank you. see you on the next one. See you soon. Cheers. Bye.